What's up, guys? My name is Cope, and you are watching the T30. No, the God tier T30. So we're live, or not live? Sorry. Ah, oops. We're watching a replay of some of my favorite T30 games so far. I've played 18 games in this tank. I've gotten three Ace Tankers and like four First Class badges. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at some Ace Tanker gameplay of this tank, and I'm gonna tell you why it's kind of become one of my favorite tanks in the game. So obviously we're here on Tundra. In this battle, I was paternal up with my friend Patriots, and he, um, yeah, he made a uh, bit of a sacrifice here as we plant big 750 health damage bomb into the ass of the AMX 350E. Uh, yeah, he played a bit of a sacrifice play. It's going to show us everything that's going up on top of the hill and uh, die for it, unfortunately. And my team just lets this Basante push, but it's all good because we're playing the T30. So for every shot that he can put into us, he can put three, right? With 360 alpha damage, right? We have 750 alpha, a better turret, and better gun handling. And we don't hit that shot. No oh, pain. Um, so, yeah, the Basante obviously takes a hit from us and backs up. We barely missed that shot on the WZ. The Basante looks like he's going to peek out again. It's kind of was just like a, a clusterfuck kind of game on top of the hill. As we plant one under the lower plate of the U75. We notice the U75 is fully upgraded using the big gun. So we can't let him shoot at the top of our turret. Now, really in this spot, I'm kind of in a bad position because the top of the T30's uh, turret is actually a massive weak point on the tank. Uh, the Patriot can't take advantage of it, but that E75 definitely could have, and he was above me the entire time. So, kind of misplayed by him, and a really bad shot by me. Should have just waited for that Patriot to come through. Uh, he puts a shot down into my hole, but you can't see it because of the horrible damage models that have become uh, standard in this game, apparently now. Um, by the way, I no longer play on improved graphics. I just turn them on for the videos now. As we put out 800, nearly 800 damage roll in the side of the Yudas, just trying to trundle his way up the hill. We're already up to nearly 4,000 damage in this game. No kills yet. So. But this spot is super strong. It's not riveting gameplay or anything in this battle. It's just kind of, you know, T30, T30 go hold down and go burr kind of uh, situation we got going here. I'm looking for the 50B to peek out against me at the situation. Just so that I can put another 750 alpha damage bomb into him. And that's my favorite part about this tank. 10 degrees of gun depression. Massive turret armor. It's just basically the same turret that you get on the T-34 or the T-29, except without the side pods that are on the T-29's turret that aren't actually modeled <laughs> as a marker damageable. They're not a, a part of the damage model on the uh, T-30 or the T-29. But obviously, if you know the history of World Snakes, you know that this is uh, the original tier 10 American heavy tank. Uh, I think it would still be somewhat competitive at tier 10. It's a little slow, uh, but it just fits so well at tier 9. It's just so good. Uh, the, I'm pinging out the, the light tank for my team so they can shoot them, but the, I mean, it just works so well at tier 9. We don't want the uh, light tank to put another shell into us, obviously. I, I think he bounces off the side of my turret here soon. But can we just take a uh, take a minute to admire the 859 damage roll I got on the Yudas 16 there? For those of you prominent at math, that is exactly 109 over the alpha. 
and then we put another nice shot into the WZ. So now we're safe, right? We're safe to just sit in this spot and wait on them to push. They have the hill, right? They're getting flanked, so they have to either come off the hill or put pressure on me at E100 and a Panther 2. So my thinking in this situation was just, okay, let's see. I'm just gonna sit here for a second. And I'm talking to my buddy Patriots the entire time. It's kind of helping me through this, honestly. As you can see, he has, he has a silver badge, so he's a better player than I am. Um, yeah. <laughs> slightly worse player than I am, but it's only slightly. He, he did get more lucky with the ranked, but I was also, I didn't play it correctly, so. Fair played to him, he actually played it really well and got himself silver, so I'm proud of him, honestly. Uh, but, uh, now we're going to get aggressive in behind the E100. E100 is going to push up, and he's going to plant one into the 50B if I'm not mistaken. No, he doesn't. Ah, interesting. So, we counted two, three, three, I don't remember. But over in the side right now, I have Patriots, like, yelling in my ear how many how many shots the 50B is fired, right? Charge's looking at me, I can see that on my screen. Because his gun facing directly at me, right? So, if I were to push the char, I would need a miracle bounce. 50B is going to take one 100 to shut him down after I put an 821 damage shot into him. But as, of course, as soon as I fire, the char is going to come around and kill me. But... Not before I am able to get 6,000 damage dealt in this battle. I believe the Kron actually picks up the top gun here. Yes, he does. And my team pretty much just mops up the rest of them really quickly. So, on to the next battle. Time to roll out. And we're back on a serene coast this time. This time I am playing with some of my new clanmates, Marco and Angry Asian. So for this campaign, I have uh, moved to Vibe. Some of you may have been able to stop by to the live streams late after Clan Wars or advances are over over the last week or two to see us play some Among Us. So basically that's a every night kind of thing, or every so often kind of thing, I guess. As you can see in the uh, top right side, we are playing against another clan member of ours in Dark Slayer 13. Um, but yeah, I, again, uh, I, I really do think this is one of the best uh, tanks in the game tier for tier. It, it, you can play it as a heavy tank, you can play it as a tank destroyer, you can play it as sport heavy. Uh, with the 10 degrees of gun depression on some maps, uh, you can't make the whole armor work as well as others, so that was that would be why I can, I'd say you could play it as sport heavy, tank destroyer, or heavy tank. And it's just so versatile in, in how you can play it that, um, as the fuse is going to vlog me here, it's just so versatile how you can play it that it's just so much fun to play. So this is uh, the first game that I've recorded that I um, actually played in standard graphics and in recording the replay in um, in improved graphics. So the reason I play in standard graphics is because I get fairly distracted by, as I'm going for my clanny here, trying to just make him know that I'm here as he is playing in the most dangerous tank on the enemy team on this map, I gotta let him know that I have 750 alpha damage looking directly at him and waiting on him to make a mistake, right? So... Like, just this kind of support heavy role that you can play in this tank is just so powerful. It's kind of the same thing that you can do with the Super Conk or a Krongong or a, uh, a Sweet Smack Slayer for 
700 because he poked it too fast. But I mean, just look how fast you can get the damage out. We're three minutes into the game, we already have 2,000 damage. The DPM's not bad at all. Putting 750 alpha in every 17 seconds or so. Much better than the DPM that you'd have on a 114, for example. Right? Uh, I've seen a couple players play the uh, the WZ114, the new tier 9 premium, as Slayer puts one into my roof, as I was talking about earlier. You don't want to let your opponents get above you in this tank, especially if they have heat or 122 millimeters of uh, gun caliber or more. I, I think it's 122. I think the roof is 40 millimeters thick. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's, it's 122 because that's the largest gun or the smallest gun. Uh, as it's 41 millimeters thick. As I put another one into the side armor, side turret armor of Dark Slayer. I really ruined his game and I kind of felt that out of it. But, uh, I mean, he also put 800 damage into my roof, so I wanted to ban back with another shot. He put two into me, I put two in him. That's just kind of how that works. Um, obviously, we're in a really bad spot. Marco uh, is not faring too well with his, uh, with his WZ-114. He did complete the marathon. As we put a brilliant shot on the Conqueror, taking him out. I forgot about that one. That was a standard round, too. I've not fired a single APCR round in this game. As Angry Asian picks up another kill. And I'm thinking about falling back. However, Artie just wants to kill Angry Asian. Spoiler alert. Uh, that 93 damage that Marco just put into Dark Slayer to take him out was the only damage that he got in this entire game. As you can see in the chat over on the side, Angry was pissed. We were in the middle of the... Uh, uh, somebody was, was talking, so we were just typing in the chat. In the game. Like, we were paying attention to them, and we were just, like, we were. We just decided to clock, talk to uh, in game chat instead of uh, over team speak. So we weren't interrupting. Um, I have to go back to base here to defend. Obviously, you want to go back to base here. Uh, that's where the majority of the hit points are left. You see one of my former clanmates there, Jolly from LA, in the 50 TP. Another really good. Uh, that one didn't go through. Now, if you if you see that, and you think, well, that hit is Capola to defend. I said the exact same thing. Uh, in fact, it even showed a pin mark on my screen anyway. Yeah, we're just strolling, looking for another kill here. As we're aiming in on Jolly and what? On pin and disc ball. Yep. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna drive in here. And are we gonna get a second kill of this game? Probably not. Shoot Marco for fun, just because. <laughs> if he doesn't fire that shot, he gets another kill here too. That's the bad thing. Uh, he would have a kill right here if he didn't fire this shot into the air. I think he bounces. Gotcha. Oh no, I reloaded faster than him. Which is another thing I have a problem with the uh, with the, the 114. As Marco types in the chat, nice 93 damage. And then I say, well, I didn't realize until we got back to the garage that he only got 93 damage. All right, all right. Welcome back to the third and final battle I have for you guys today. The summer on Save Haven. And we are top tier and alone. Um, I don't remember going this way, but yeah, I don't remember the first part of this battle at all, apparently. So obviously, T30 versus T30. 
top tier heavy versus top tier heavy, let's be honest. It's it's not. Hey, they're not tank destroyers in this situation. They are heavy tanks. Now, I saw the two TNHs on the loading screen, and I was like, I think they're probably going to go into that tunnel. And I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to go there. And so I waited for the 45 TP to get out of my way. So I just kind of hit my little punt there as we see the Louis. Side scrape out against us. Could have taken a shot there. Could have taken a shot there. Decided not to. Decided, you know what? Let's side scrape out. See if he's going to show himself. Uh, and I uh, can't find the shot, so I'm just like, uh, yeah, now I'll scrape this low. I'm just gonna, I'll take one throw. I believe it takes a shot here from something else. No? And then, when we go down into the tunnel real quick, a wild TNH appears. And we get a thousand damage fire shot with 261 tracking out of it. Which is always a brilliant start to a game, but we are down big, nearly 3,000 hit points, two minutes into the game. Our maintenance have completely lost that side of the map. Now we're down 4,000. Low is side on to us. Low roll on for 628. Disappointing. But we see him go down there. So we're like, ah. I'm like, ah. I don't know how to outplay this T30 here, so. Oh, oh, we have him overwhelmed. Let me just uh, put a little bit more pressure on him so he doesn't poke out and try to kill somebody. Right. Somebody else push in to do some damage to him also. And I see that I spot an issue one and I'm like, ha, ah, sorry, 45 DP, you're gonna have to die. I'm like, yeah, pushing through this is probably not a good idea. And then I see a comet on top of the roof. I'm like, ha, ah, I wonder if he's gonna uh, kill me. I was like, ah, uh, see there he's not looking at this. So I'm going back to serve 819. And then he gets ammo wrecked, which means I ammo wrecked. The first shot took. Obviously, you're going to get massive module damage out of 150 on the round. And here, I'm going to side scrape off for the SU-101. And plant one into his lower plate for 870. And I think that's just kind of like what sets the T-30 apart from the other tank destroyers. And uh, really, I'm going to say heavy tanks at tier 9 as I'm back up here. This is a really bad play. I mean, but I was like, ah, this comment might be stupid and try to push me here. And it's not. So I'm like, ah, well, if he's going to be completely passive and not going to push me, I'm just going to end this man's whole career. And goodbye, comment. Um, that's all you have to do. We get 780 spotting on the issue there. God, he's not gonna come around the corner, so I push out, and then I went, like, oh shit, a char! And then I put a shell for 783 into his side armor. Now, the char makes a really bad play here. Instead of rushing me with his autoloader, he just kinda like does this. Because I just don't get the shell up in time. So I have a habit of spam clicking. Spam clicking until my shell gets loaded. Um, so a really bad habit of uh, spam clicking my shells on, and uh, that was like, the one time I didn't do it. So as soon as your shell's loaded, if you're spam clicking your uh, left mouse button, you have no delay between your shell getting loaded and it firing. So you should uh, do that most of the time. If you're in like a brawl, you should just be spam clicking. Uh, if you have enough mouse control to not shift your aim, in the process. CG sword come up here. And then we spot the other comet, right? And he's gonna put a shell into us. And he's just gonna sit there and sit there and give me a great shot into his turret and goodbye. Another comet. 
I believe that I'm like, uh, no, nah, this is a really bad idea. I should just turn, right? At some point, I do. Ah, it's one of the G's organs spotted, and he tries to push down. So I just back up, apparently. And I have uh, rigged Brothers in Arms here. And put a, another shot. And bringing our total up combined of nearly 7,000. In a tier 9 with 4 kills. It's a great game. Um... I'm just pushing up the side of the mountain here, hoping I can get a shot into the Crusader. I'm watching the mini-map, I see that he backs up, or uh, that I can back up and shoot him, and I was just like, eh, my team is gonna get him. And hey, look at that, it was uh, my platoon mate. So, that's the T30 gameplay I got for you. Let's, uh, let's look at the stats, shall we? And we're back in the garage, <laughs> looking at my T30 crew so you can see how absolute garbage it is um so our first game that i showed on tundra this was my third battle played in the vehicle i believe and it was my first day stinker with six thousand damage dealt 1300 uh, experience two kills uh, our Kron also had an amazing or pretty much an amazing game uh, i looked after it and pretty sure he's like a 8000 pr 9000 pr player um 11 out of 8 shots. All three of those were literally just bad aim by me. Uh, 2200 blocked, which shows kind of like the big uh, meaty turret armor that it can have whenever you get in a spot where they can't really hit your roof or they just don't know to hit your roof in this tank. Uh, Patriots, obviously... I felt bad in that game. Uh, but yeah, that's Tundra, the game on Serene Coast. I was not kidding. Marco literally got 93 damage. Super Sag there. Um, Asian didn't, uh, didn't fare much better, but that's also because I was stealing all of the damage along with the VZ who ended up getting the high caliber, but somehow this is still an ace tanker, I guess because I was shooting tier 10s the entire time, I get 1,300 uh, base experience points for 4,666 damage, yikes. Um, six vehicles damaged on that ridge with the final kill on the E4 as well. Uh, now, that should be like, I don't know, 5,300 damage because, you know, I definitely hit the cupola of that 50 TP with a 150 millimeter shell, but I guess you can't uh, get them all, and it was an ace tanker anyway, so who really cares that much? Um, and the last game, this one was uh, tons of fun, obviously, um, ended up actually being 7,000 combined. We had some blind spotting damage on the SU and the SU-101. Um, so yeah, obviously we're gonna get a meaty chunk of XP there. Uh, rig the, the Brothers in Arms. I believe he also got a Confederate? Nope, tank sniper, Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Incredible accuracy there. Olant from Cobalt. Uh, I hit 9 out of 9 out of and pin 9, which is always awesome. Got the fire on the TH 105 1000 to set his fuel tanks on fire, destroy his track, and deal 1018 damage to him. And the rest of the shots were kind of like so so. Especially the one on the low for only 628. Yikes. But the 870 kind of made up for it. A plethora of uh, other metals, obviously, which is always fun. Uh, I believe I'm on for a Reaper medal right now, which is also kind of fun. But. Yep, I made credits in every single one of this game, one of these games, like massive credits. So you can actually make credits off of a tank that you're using 
large consumables and all that on. Even at tier 9, when you just have a massive game like this and you're not firing a ton of premium rounds, which you don't need to do with the 276 millimeters of pen that you have on your standard. Now, I would say that when it does come to the premium rounds, this tank does start to struggle with only 320 millimeters of pen. But when you have 270 standard pen, you can pin almost anything and you don't really need the 320 millimeters of pen, honestly. So, that's all I got for you. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, be checking into the Twitch channel to potentially see some vibing Among Us. We're going to vibe in some Among Us probably for the next two weeks a little bit. And, um, yeah. I'm going to be playing some other games for the rest of the two weeks, too, uh, on my days off from work. Uh, hopefully, you guys stop by and uh, check it out. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.